Welcome back. During segregation, blacks in many communities were barred from white-only businesses, other places of dwellings, and even theaters. So to enjoy entertainment, blacks in Ardmore built their own. We we'll have to go back to the 30s when Ardmore itself had more black businesses on Main Street because you had a black business nearly on every corner of Main Street. This building itself was the black Theater. Take a trip down Main Street in Ardmore and you'll experience history. You may pass 536 East Main and see Greater Love Victory Temple Church, but there's more there than meets the eye. Where the church is now, it was called the Cozy Den. On one side, on the left side of the church, as you go into the, the with the confectioner cons stand. Built in 1922, Ardmore was the home to one of the first all-black theaters. Completed during the time of segregation, it was housed in the black business and residential district, an area that had more than 2,000 African Americans. It was one of the main things on Main Street, and one of the nicest things we had because that theater, it was a theater. Charles H. Cox, Jr. is 93 years old. He remembers his family helped run a business inside the theater called the Cozy Den. When the theater wasn't in use, well, people came and bought from us. If they didn't have anything in the theater, then our place was open. And we, we stayed open around, kind of around the clock up to late 12, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Cox says they had anything from snuff and cigarettes to cold cola and pop and all kinds of food from hamburgers and fish. You could smell the stuff all outdoors. So we had a, a variety for as long as it was. It would kind of take care of the immediate needs of the people on this side of town. Because, as I said, you could take a quarter and, and have a whole meal. And that's about as good as you could do in those days. The building functioned as a theater until 1944 when it was sold to the Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Church. Then decades later, the Greater Love Temple Church bought the building where Lee White is the current pastor. I think it gives the people uh, a positive hope about the community that yet there's some positive things going on in the community, the church is, is here, but not just, just here per se as a building, but there's active ministry going on. The building is listed on the National Register of Historical Places, and Mr. Cox will tell you it continues to serve a greater purpose. But it was nice to have that place to come to, and along with that we had other business up the street which right down the street was a funeral home, and then we had a barbecue place up the street, so we had a lot of black businesses in this area. Well, dozens of black served various communities across the country. Sherman had Fred Douglas High School, Denison had Ang Langston Anderson, and then Terrell High School, and Ardmore had Douglas. Hundreds of scholars and state champion athletes from 1919 to 1969 graduated from Ardmore Douglas High School. I had a roundtable discussion with alumni from Ardmore Dunmar Elementary and Ardmore Douglas High School, and those who were in the last class at Douglas before integrating to Ardmore High as they talk about their memories and their role of black schools that played in the community. You think in 1919, you just had two graduates. Mm -hmm. And then we end up in the class of 1964, had the most graduates to graduate from Armour Douglas. Before I could come to Douglas, they had no room in Dunbar, so they had, to, and Douglas had no room, so they sent us to First Baptist Church, right. where we had Dr. Smith's wife and Gloria Ainsworth was our teacher. Mm -hmm. Then when we got here, I, we, I couldn't play football. I wasn't good enough, you know. I wanted to be track, <laughs> but we didn't have track at, at uh, Douglas. So I got in the band, and we had W.W. Duncan from Dallas who came in and taught us all these fancy drill. People came from our, our band was about 32 pieces, about 12 majorettes, and they could strut and they were good. Mm -hmm. I was drum major, and Peter Green, and his mm -hmm. brother, I believe, was drum major, and Elma Jones. And we put on quite a show, and you could hear us at least three blocks, and we right. finally got a Glockenspiel, which you could hear two blocks. Right. You hear the Ardmore band come down, you could dee 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 dee, right. but you could hear us. Yeah. And people came, like between Oklahoma City, as big as their band was, when they came down, they wanted to see what Ardmore was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Our couples were purple yeah. and white, and we put it on. Yeah. <laughs> we were very proud of that. Yeah. We were proud of our school. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being in class mm -hmm. when President Kennedy 
yeah. was assassinated. Yeah. Wow. And the calm that went over the school, you know, it was like mm -hmm. everybody was in a... Mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. we couldn't imagine mm -hmm. something like that happening. Mm -hmm. right. And to us, you know, for the teachers to mm -hmm. have us quiet and in the classroom and, and nobody talking and nobody moving and, you know, the number of students in the class that yeah. cried that day, mm -hmm. it was just, yeah. it was just really something that you just... You just never did forget. A lot of our teachers were our church members. Right. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's, that's true. Right. And so that's, true. that's I think that had a lot to do with how they treated us. Right. Because we were family. That's right. Mm -hmm. Everything I learned at Dumbo and Douglas I used up until I retired in twenty fifteen. Mm -hmm. I took typing one and two right down the hallway there. Mm -hmm. I was able to use typing and got on the computers. And it was a good transition to yeah. a computer mm -hmm. because I had typing one and two. Mm -hmm. right. And I operate on a computer, I know, at least eight years before I retire. It was so easy because of what I learned here. Every two years we have a reunion. Mm -hmm. We have our lamina reunion this year. And it used to be like 300 or more people, wouldn't it, Charlie, when it first started yeah, out our reunion? Yeah, more than that. Mm -hmm. Register, mm -hmm. and about four or five hundred just run around there and join. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so now we're at this point now where we, we're, we're running at the 200 mark easily, mm -hmm. and, well, probably 200 might register, but you got 100, 300 running around trying to be still be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're not, we want this legacy to hold on with Douglas. That's what we're trying to teach our kids. Douglas have a lot of history. Now, our alumni association has purchased the Dunbar building. So we're in the process, and this is our secretary of our Dunbar heritage. Mm -hmm. she, we're in the process of renovating, trying to do renovation there. So uh, we want the kids to know what Douglas meant to us and what Dunbar meant to us. The people that came out of Douglas and Dunbar came out mm -hmm. real good, prominent people. Mm -hmm. I have three kids, and they're all grown now. But they get just as excited as I do when we're having our reunions <laughs> because they've listened to us talk about it. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to instill that in them because they needed to know where I came from right. Right. and what right. struggles or whatever it is I had as a, a you know, as a, live, going to school at Douglas and living in Ardmore. Mm -hmm. right. um, so they're excited about it too. They, mm -hmm. They want to come. They they come and join. They come and have a good time with us. So it is good to let your kids know yeah. and talk to them about your life mm -hmm. uh, and your life when you went to school at Douglas High School. Mm -hmm. And right now, the best place to be when we were growing up was Douglas High School. That's it. Right. Well, a special thank you to all of those who contributed to this report, as indicated in those stories. And thank you so much for joining us for News 12 Forum this morning.